Hello friends and welcome back. Today we are doing a fun video. I haven't done one of these in a long time. It is a deck unboxing. Clearly you can see the Star Spinner Tarot here um, by Trungles. I had this on pre-order for <laughs> quite a while and it came about six weeks late, which I've heard is not uncommon. Um, I think a combination of this deck perhaps being really quite popular as well as the virus and everything. It's taking a little longer to get out to people, but mine is finally here. And I asked you guys on Instagram if you wanted an unboxing. You said yes, so let's dig in. So straight up, this box feels really, really lovely. Um, who published this? Chronicle Books. I don't know that I have a deck by them. But anyway, it opens out like this. Ooh. I was really attracted to just how colorful this deck is. So I'm really looking forward to having a look. Now, I'll just sit the cards here for just a moment. We won't take too much of a look at the book, but just so you get a bit of an idea. Oh, it's decorated quite nicely. And we get a page for each of the cards. Just a short paragraph, a couple of sentences. Um, and we get the reversed meaning as well. And same for the minors, which is great. So a good little white book. I have not watched any unboxings or walkthroughs of this deck. Um, I've just kind of seen a few images online, like I'm sure a lot of people have. So I am kind of going in blind and I'm pretty excited. I love this purple though, it's a really pretty backing. Obviously this is an unboxing, this is the first time I've seen the card, so I'm not going to have like the most insightful, revolutionary things to say, but it's a good opportunity to get my first impressions and for you guys to have a good look at the cards too if you're interested in them. Let's see if I can zoom in a little. To me, this is a really interesting fool. I mean, we have the kind of stereotypical fool in terms of the attire and everything, but the position of the character is quite clearly really different. More often than not, the fool is quite um, in, in movement, I suppose. Um, we see someone quite exuberant, often with like a chest puffed out and you know, moving along on a path or off a cliff sometimes. Whereas this fool, I don't know, it feels almost fetus-like, the way that it's curled up like that. So for me, the innocence of this card really comes across quite strongly. It also looks like the fool is like tentatively sn smelling that white rose. It looks to me like this is the first time this fool is having this sensory experience. Um, it's kind of like an awakening. I don't know. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but that's what it's evoking for me. Now we have the magician, which is very a very active, fiery um, sort of a card with like cards flying up here and a wand and it looks like it's we've caught the magician in like in the act in the middle of some ritual or some spell. Also, I don't know whether it's the hat and the beard or the red, but it kind of just looks like a really badass version of Santa. And for anyone who plays Animal Crossing, <laughs> the minute I saw this card, I thought of the sound that the um, the game makes when you're crafting something in New Horizons. It looked, for me, that's what this reminded me of, of my character being at its tool bench crafting something new. And I legitimately heard that sound in my head. The High Priestess, so pretty. And I love how we have throwbacks to what we see in traditional imagery with like the two pillars that are two different colors. We have the moon and the sun. And even though we don't have pomegranates or anything like that, I don't know, I think like these um, pinkish sort of diamonds, it's a throwback to me, um, kind of like a hint of that to me in the imagery. I like too that the character kind of has a hood um, that really evokes a lot of mystery um, and uncertainty and more of the shadowy aspect of the card for me, that more often the veil in the traditional card might sort of suggest. The Empress. I just had a bit of a look at the um, guidebook here and I'll read you what it says for the Empress. The Empress is representative of generosity and comfort. The fool wishes, the magician plans, the high priestess ponders, and the Empress provides. This card indicates the satisfaction of natural desires through careful cultivation and mindful stewardship. I really like that. I like that it's literally just a couple of sentences. It's so simple really quick but I don't know I really really like that description of the Empress I think it's beautiful and I love that it's not focused on specifically gendered gendered language or of womanhood or of pregnancy or any of that I think that that's a really effective beautiful description of the 
um, empress without all of that gendered baggage. And this card is just stunning. Um, the empress's eyes and, and the smile, it all is just so warm and like the book says, comforting. I really like this card and I really like the way it's described in the book. The emperor. I love how bright and fresh this is. So often the emperor is full of really intense, darker colors and really intense reds and things. So I wasn't necessarily expecting to see soft blues and purples and I think it really works. There's a lightness and almost like an effortlessness to this emperor's power, like power wielded lightly. It's power without oppression. That's kind of the sense I get from this because of those lighter colors. And there's sort of like a confidence to that and this emperor, I think, kind of like a calmness, like a centeredness. Um, where there's not a need to enforce power. Um, it's more a reality. Like you don't have to enforce what you already possess sort of thing. Is the sort of feeling I'm getting from it. I don't know if that makes sense, but I really like this card. The Hierophant. Although obviously clearly done in Trungle style, it, it's relatively traditional in kind of like the hand gestures and the keys and things like that. Now the lovers, I believe we have several lovers cards in this deck. Let me have a look. Yeah, okay, we've got four. Let's have a look. So there are our four lovers. How nice is that? In terms of coloring and all of that, one definitely stood out to me immediately and it was this one. I think I just really love the blues and then the heart in the center here and both their hands kind of coming together. It sort of looks like they're both supporting and nurturing that relationship together. I don't know. This one is the one that visually just stood out to me first. I think, is this one the only one that we have like the third character, the angel in? Um, so that's kind of, I suppose, leaning a little more traditional, although none of them strictly are. All of them but this one kind of have some hint that we are in a garden with the trees, with the fruit. I like that all of them feel quite tender in their own ways. Like they all feel like healthy, balanced relationships. They feel like partnerships. They're all really, really lovely. And I think I'd be quite happy to read with any of them. And I'm sure some people would maybe switch the card out depending on which might fit best the person they're reading for, which might feel um, most suited for them. For me, because I primarily read for myself, I feel like I could just quite easily switch out depending whichever one I felt like in the mood for, <laughs> whichever one I was kind of vibing with at the time. Clearly at the moment it's this one, but I feel like that could change because they're all stunning. Lovely. Let's get back to the rest of the deck. I love this. I love the two little kitties sitting up here. That's adorable. I really enjoy the colors in this. Kind of similar to what I said about the emperor, but maybe to a lesser extent where sometimes the chariot can just feel really intense and overbearing. And this has not lost any of that kind of force and will and strength. And, and it hasn't lost any of that determination, but it's just presented in a softer way. I love it. I love these colors and I love the kitties. Fortitude or strength. I really like how our strength character is like really cradling gently these petals of what look like a lotus. And the lion, rather than strength kind of controlling or taming the lion, they look like partners. It almost looks like instead that this lion is supporting strength or protecting strength or even a part of strength. Kind of like the lion is strength's courage manifest. It's really beautiful. Again, there's something about the way Trungles has like portrayed facial expressions and like hand placements and gestures that there's just to me this reads as quite tender and I really like it. The Hermit. Fairly standard sort of a hermit but just beautiful colours. Really lovely. The Wheel of Fate. I have yet to really find a Wheel of Fortune, at least none that are coming to mind that like I adore. Um, but I quite like this. Um, it kind of reminds me at least of our fate being interwoven with other people's and how there's only so much we can control and that we all have different things that impact us. And kind of a reminder that not only do the actions and behaviours and words of other people and other systems influence us, but we also have that impact on others. I don't know, the way these two characters are kind of 
in that sort of fetal position spinning together. It reminds me of how, you know, our fate is all, and the fate of all of us is interwoven. It's symbiotic almost in a way, and we can choose together collectively or individually, we can choose to make those relationships and those connections parasitic or mutually beneficial. I don't know, that's all of what's coming to mind for me. I really like it actually. It's quite chaotic with all those colors. Justice, oh, this is beautiful. Reminds me a little bit of like Sailor Moon or something. I think just the colors and in the clouds, I don't know, just, <laughs> it's really pretty. I actually kind of like that Justice is up in the clouds. For me, it kind of removes it from that more state or law-based justice and makes it bigger than that and more important than that. More of like a universal force of justice or idea of justice as opposed to the justice system, if that makes sense. I like that a lot. The Hanged Man, pretty standard sort of Hanged Man, lovely art of course. And Death, oh wow, I like this. I love that we have like the stars and the cosmos under the cape of Death and that it's holding a baby. I think it's quite clear that the message here is that life, birth, death, rebirth, all of that is more or less one and the same. And it's both sad and somber. I think we can see that through the face here, but it's also really beautiful. And are these poppies, like remembrance? Oh, that's really sweet. And I love how we've had all these kind of circles and patterns and things in the backgrounds, but this sort of, to me, this yellow behind the character looks like a sun as well. It's all just coming together really beautifully. And I love like the butterflies and the interaction here. It's just stunning. Beautiful. Temperance. I love how calm and centered and sort of steadfast temperance is here. There's just like a focus um, and a stillness that's really kind of captivating in a way, isn't it? It's lovely. The devil. I really like this devil. I like that there's sort of a sensual feeling to it, especially with the pink and then the way this character's drawn and also the fact that we don't have like extremely pained facial expressions on these um, characters. So it could be quite a sensual, even sexual experience um, depicted by this card, but it also has those layers of bondage and temptation and loss of control and just all of that. I love that all of that is here but it doesn't feel like there's a really strong layer of moral judgment over it. I like it a lot. I really like this devil. And the tower, kind of a classic tower in a lot of ways, but also a little different. We've got like, are these cards flying from the sky? It sort of reminds me of like 52 pick up the cards or fall how they fall. Like there's not much control you have in this situation. Um, and also this, like, it looks like a river of blood. Um, although you can't really be sure because of the way that colour is used in this deck. It could just be water, but um, obviously the red does give it a certain connotation. It's a really intense card. Chaos, a lot going on. And the star. Oh, isn't that beautiful coming after that tower card? Again, it's like that tenderness that is so prevalent to me in this deck. The way that this character is kind of like cradling um, the pot. The only thing that's slightly throwing me off, which I'll get over, is this looks like an ibis. And if this is an ibis, <laughs> oh my god, any Australian who's ever had to put up with a bin chicken, I'm not feeling particularly calm and hopeful with an ibis in my face. <laughs> so I'm going to just choose to think of it as another kind of bird, I think. But I really like this card overall. It's just stunning. And the moon, this again gives me kind of like Sailor Moon anime vibes of like a moment of magical transformation or something. It's beautiful. Like I love how we've kind of got this fabric moving around. Like I love that movement. It sort of looks like a dance or one of those transformation montage sort of things. I love how we've got the rabbit here. It's just beautiful. And I love how we get so much symbolism and meaning just from everything that's included in the card without there just being a massive picture of a moon on the front. I don't know, I just think it's gorgeous. And the sun. I really like how these birds here and also the character of the sun sort of look like they're kind of coming down at us on Earth. Like it's quite a an active card. Um, and like, it, to me, the sun always feels like that, like quite a forceful sort of a thing where it, it illuminates everything regardless of whether you want it to or not. And that can be a really 
passionate, exciting, fun, joyous thing, or it can be a really intense, overwhelming sort of a thing. So I love that kind of intensity to this card and also how it's just kind of like coming at you. I don't know. I love it. Judgment. Our angel in the sky blowing on the horn and the blow. Oh, this is really lovely. I love how there's such like a calmness and a confidence to this card, just like a a sure like a certainty of your place in the world is sort of how this feels i just love it like a comfortability with the self it's really quite sweet i like it a lot okay i'm gonna have to speed up the minors because i oh this video is gonna be really long um but the ones nice and simple really lovely oh two of ones ah oh, so our our yeah they're kind of color coded so our ones are all yellow they're sort of a little traditional in terms of like, you know, our three of wands has someone kind of looking away off into the distance with their wands and things, but just a sort of magical element. Some fairies. I like this. Oh, that's beautiful. I think this is interesting because obviously a lot of the time we have five characters kind of um, fighting amongst each other, whereas here it sort of looks like the wands are kind of uh, meeting in the center here and that's where the tension is at the heart of this character so it's it's all of these different elements um, all of these different ones kind of clashing together in the center and this character has to handle all of that different energy like it's an internal experience as opposed to an external one but there's still conflict and just difficulty in navigating that i like that a lot i think it's really effective this is beautiful. I do think it's interesting. This tower looks a lot like the tower card that we saw earlier. Even this mountain sort of reminds me of it. Yeah. She looks like she's standing in front of this tower. So is it success and reward and accomplishment before the chaos or is it after the rebuilding? To me, it looks like it's before perhaps perhaps a reminder that this success is fleeting, that we can't always be on top of the world with everybody handing us accolades all of the time. This is one moment in time. Enjoy that success, but don't put all your eggs in one basket sort of a thing, maybe. like it. A seven of Wands. This feels quite traditional, but in a more playful way. This sort of looks like Peter Pan to me. <laughs> I like it. Eight of Wands. I really love this art style and the colours. Nine. And ten. Aww. It sort of looks like to me that this character wanted to have a flower because they thought flowers were pretty. And now they finally have a bunch of flowers, but they're realising how much work goes into maintaining a garden. And they're just kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> It's so cute. I was not expecting this level of cuteness from these cards. I think because pretty much all the cards I had seen were from the Major Arcana. And the Miners clearly just have a bit of a different vibe to them. Certainly, like, they feel like they still fit and they belong to the same deck. Um, but there's a, a simplicity to them and, a, like, a youthfulness to them. This is really cute. Again, it's giving me, like, Peter Pan sort of vibes. And I'm into it. Ooh. Very Knight of Wandsy, very showy. This just seems really showy and ambitious um, and that kind of adolescent, I can take over the world, I can do anything sort of a feeling. I love it. Oh, wow. That is stunning. That is actually like stunning. I think this might, might be my favorite card in the deck so far. Oh, I don't know. So many of them are good, but this just kind of took me by surprise by just how beautiful that is gorgeous it has a fairy tale theme to it like feel to it as well and the king of wands interesting i'll be curious to see the other kings um because all of the other um three court cards for the wands have been like characters like people or fairies but you know like human-esque at least whereas this king is a crow so I'll be curious to see if the other kings are also animals. Um, so I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment to see what the other kings are like. 
the Ace of Cups, this beautiful mermaid and a dove, and oh, it's beautiful, really nice. Sorry, it's chalices in this deck. That's lovely. It's kind of like relatively traditional, sort of like the base of it is, but just done in this beautiful art style and kind of simplified down. This is really tender. I like that a lot. It's beautiful. Oh, maybe this is my favorite of the minor. Oh, I'm not sure. That's beautiful. Although it is interesting that it doesn't really kind of go along with the colors. I mean, we do still have a bit of pink here, but the one suit was very much yellow all the way through. Whereas the cups, perhaps is pink is the theme, but this card certainly isn't just pink, is it? It's beautiful though. I love that coloring. Five. Oh, this is really interesting, especially with all those kind of figures in the background. They look like they're drowning. And it sort of feels like this character, our main character, is deciding <laughs> whether to save them or not. But then this figure looks like it's threatening our main character with this knife. So if they do attempt to save them, there's a very, very real risk that it's taking our main character down with them. Wow, that's really intense. I mean, the Five of Cups is never an easy card, but that's really kind of visceral. It's like our main character loves whatever they've lost, but it's going to cost a lot to attempt to save them. Wow, okay, that's really intense. I like that a lot. This reminds me of kind of idealized childish notions like this kind of knight in shining armor sort of fairy tale stuff that's sort of what that reminds me of although like the goldfish in this character's hair is just really pretty again we have fish in the hair i wonder what that symbolizes it's beautiful i mean i know people talk about goldfish in particular having you know short memories and forgetting stuff is there an element of of that? I don't know. That's sort of the feeling I get, is that it has something to do with ignorance, of forgetting what you've learnt, forgetting yourself, um, of forgetting your priorities maybe, and so the ignorance that comes from all of that. That's sort of what it remind, it's making me think of. It's really beautiful. The Eight of Cups. It looks quite a lot like um, the Four in a way, doesn't it? But with a less sort of magical element. Um, like this character's, it could potentially be the same character, it sort of looks like it, but they've lost their tail and their crown. That's a really interesting kind of juxtaposition. To me it definitely looks like it's the same character. Not appreciating what they had here perhaps, kind of wishing for something different and now they've lost what they did have. That's sort of what it reads like to me, um, on first impression anyway. That's quite sad. Oh, this is beautiful. I love how this kind of illustrates like pride in a really different way to the kind of smug sort of grin <laughs> that we often see in the Nine of Cups. Like there's kind of a celebration of your own achievements and success, but in a way that recognizes the skills you've developed as opposed to just sitting smugly. I don't know, I love it. And I do like how we have feathers because they remind me of like wishes. Um, and you know, this is sometimes called the wish card. I don't know, it's just stunning. I like it a lot. Oh, this is interesting. Looks like a wedding. It sort of feels like wish fulfillment, but like in the really almost classic sort of way of like you grow up, you fall in love, you get married, it's a happy ending. Like that's sort of what this card reads like to me, which is kind of unusual, given that this deck has provided us with some really unique takes on the cards. So I don't know, it's interesting that it's, at least how I'm reading this card, that this looks like two people getting married. It's quite traditional in a sense, isn't it? Interesting. A traditional sense of what happiness is, of what that looks like. This is so cute. Look at the puppy. <laughs> this is super cute. And I love that it clearly is a puppy, not a grown dog. And we all know how excitable and adorable puppies are. This knight looks like someone who's written some poetry. <laughs> I love it. Oh, the queen. Oh, wow. With the whales and the... Oh, oh. I like that. 
It's like this queen is the water. That's amazing. Like, that's an awful lot of power and responsibility this queen is wielding, and yet it's still such a beautiful, gentle, tender image. I love that. That's beautiful. Oh, this king looks like a dragon. Wow. Okay, so our king of wands was a crow, wasn't it? Yes. So it does look like our kings aren't illustrated as people, at least these two aren't. And it's interesting because so often crows are associated more with the suit of swords and dragons might be associated more with the suit of wands if we're talking more stereotypical obvious examples. I want to have a quick look at what the book has to say. The king of chalices represents patient compassionate stewardship. The king is intentional about addressing strong and unruly emotions with great sensitivity and care and guides you toward emotional maturity and level-headedness in trying times particularly where a diplomatic and even-handed response is required. Your decisions should be predicated on warmth and generosity. I'm not sure how much I get of that from my idea of dragons, but it's a really cool card. <laughs> a nice, simple, kind of classic Ace of Swords. I really like this sort of mirrored image of um, this character kind of meeting themselves to make this decision. I like that a lot. Pretty classic Rider Waite Smith sort of a Three of Swords. I have to admit, I'm a little tired of seeing this image like exactly like this, and I was excited to see how Trungles had done it because so much of this deck is really kind of creative and interesting. And this feels a little, a little disappointing to me, but it's really pretty still. This is interesting because I, I don't know if this is supposed to be, but this sort of looks like this character's lying in a coffin. Um, which is not usually how I read the Four of Swords. It's a really pretty card though. Let me have a better look. Yeah, however I look at that, that looks like a coffin to me. <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys, What do you guys think? Do you think it's a coffin? <laughs> so I'm not sure how I feel about that. This is an interesting take on the Five of Swords. So often I see the Five of Swords, as I think many people do, as kind of like winning, but at what cost? This Five of Swords sort of feels similar, but it's almost like that next step of kind of kicking someone when they're down or like beating a dead horse of kind of like, okay, you've won, we get it, but you're just kind of crossing those, I don't know, maybe ethical boundaries now. Like this just doesn't seem necessary. And perhaps it's driven by something more than just a desire to win, like revenge or something. I don't know, this feels like quite a complex card to me. It definitely kind of gives me an uncomfortable feeling of like ethics or morals or values or something are being crossed here. Um, and like, yes, we all want to win sometimes, but going an extra step too far is just going to be something you regret in the long run or is going to come back to bite you. Sort of that's what I'm feeling from this card. The Six of Swords. Her character's in a boat. This character, is that like a skull under there? Instead of like a, yeah, it looks like it is. Interesting. So it's like um, our two characters here with death in their boat. Quite a potent image there. Now Seven of Swords, stealing away in the undercover of darkness. Eight of Swords. Interesting that we don't just have like a figure bound up, but um, like a creature of some kind, like partly transformed perhaps, or and then like we've got this ribbon kind of coming across the face. Oh, nine. <laughs> that this little gremlin creature certainly adds to that um, that kind of really awful sense of anxiety. It makes me think of. How I've heard people describe sleep paralysis and feeling like someone or something is pressing down on their chest. That's what this reminds me of. I've never had that experience. I don't ever want to have it, but oh yeah, no, this is making me feel anxious just looking at it. And the 10. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's no coming back from that, is there? <laughs> the page. I like this. This is like a pretty traditional sort of page of swords, but I do like it. I can't, I can't lie. The knight. Oh, I like this. This looks kind of like someone going off to battle. It's really beautiful though. I like it a lot. Oh, this is interesting. I need to have a better look at that. So 
we like have a snake and it I know this is like the queen's dress but it sort of looks like a path leading up to her um and then we got this snake kind of curling around almost like a shawl and then they're like spitting out petals or have they bitten the rose I'm not sure it kind of looks quite startling and I sort of feel like that reminds me of the Queen of Swords often having the like the Queen of Swords isn't always too worried about the niceties and like what you should do and how you should behave the Queen of Swords is often more concerned in about like what needs to happen um, what needs to be said that's sort of what this is making me think of and I really like it and then our King of Swords looks like a bird of some kind Honestly, I'm not sure how I feel about the kings yet because I don't tend to love animal decks um, and I'm glad this isn't one, but the kings I think are going to be the cards that I struggle with the most in this deck. I love this. It's very classic Rider Waite Smith, like even the guard and everything about this looks like the Rider Waite Smith redrawn, but I really like this artwork, so I like it. Again, actually quite classic, but just beautifully done. This is a little different. This character here is holding um, like a lamp, it looks like a genie lamp and like this is a genie and it looks like the genie's giving the character coins or whatever they've wished for. To me this feels like a wish card and like getting what you wished for in terms of resources, whether that's money or whatever, which is interesting because I often think of the three of coins more as like collaboration or working together or learning from someone um, and I guess you could say they're working together, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this card. I'll have to have a think about it and maybe read the book a little bit later. The four of coins. The five. Oh, we have a cracked mirror. This is really quite a beautiful card. The six of coins. This card doesn't scream of generosity or status quo or any of the things that I usually kind of see people talking about around the six of coins I suppose it, it it certainly is illustrative of abundance so I suppose it depends what we do with that abundance it's really pretty I love this green the seven of coins looks like we're contemplating the future opportunities and these birds are kind of getting ready to head off on their new journey the eight of coins that's interesting and I like because I often talk about the eight of coins or just coins in general representing resources. And I think people think of, it's easy to think of money or like physical resources, but I think the most significant one we have and often the one that we undervalue is our time. So I really, really like this. And that goes for investing as well. Investing time in teaching ourselves something or learning something new or developing ourselves that's an investment of time which I, I really like this I like this a lot I think that's such an effective great take on the eight of pentacles and something I haven't seen before I love it the nine this is beautiful I love the nine of pentacles I love that there's just this really quiet unforced confidence in this card it's beautiful and the 10, this feels pretty traditional. Love the dog, very cute. And the page, I like that this page is in the garden where our ace was. It's really pretty, I love this dress too. The knight of coins, <laughs> I like this knight, very cute. Oops, oh, this queen's beautiful. Really, really pretty. And I am curious, a king <laughs> is a rabbit. Quite a stern looking rabbit too. Well, that is it. That is our beautiful, wonderful, brand new star spin tarot. And I really, really like it. It's absolutely beautiful. I really like the minor arcana. And to be honest, I hadn't really looked at the minor arcana. So I was kind of unsure <laughs> going into it. It was a bit of a surprise. They certainly were a lot more simple than the mages, but I think they were effective. I have to say, I think the cards that I'm least impressed with just personally would probably be the Kings. Um, just cause I don't love animal decks because I don't know animal, what animals are supposed to mean and 
whatever just I I struggle to read that in cards a lot of the time but I'm happy that it's only four cards I'll have to worry about in this one the art is stunning I love the use of color in this deck in particular is just incredible and like I said at the beginning and I think throughout there's a gentleness a tenderness uh, even a sensuality to a lot of these cards that I just I'm really digging but I think this video will be really really long so I'm not going to carry on too much I do hope you've enjoyed having this uh, look at these cards with me and of course as always leave any comments or questions down below I'll do my best to get back to you and of course before we go a big big thank you to all of my patrons over on patreon I really appreciate your support and a big extra special thank you goes to Tracy Timmerman, Laurie, Lynette Brown, The Hales K and Biffy Rose, the MVPs. Thank you so, so much. And thank you all for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I will talk to you again soon. So much love. Bye.